point is it's just really, really quick. It is something that I've seen so many atheists, uh, and and uh, they say this that Jesus never existed. Mm-hmm. And I mean, in my case, I went to a secular divinity school, and uh, I'm trained in Greek, in Greek and, and Latin, and so on. So I got this book from um, one scholar, and he actually counted 6,000-plus scholars. I mean, universally, every scholar, teaching scholar, teaching scholar, not every scholar, but every teaching scholar in classics, ancient history, New Testament, early Christianity, etc., they all convey and say, yes, Jesus existed. Yeah. Do you, do you know why? <laughs> Well, because there's overwhelming evidence. No. Yes. No, no, that's not the reason why. There may, in fact, be. I wasn't saying there's not evidence. I'm saying that's not the reason why. The reason why is that from a historical perspective, if someone is portrayed as a nonfiction actual character who existed, the default is just to accept that that's the case. Now, of those scholars, see, on my, my position, I'm not convinced that Jesus existed. I'm also not convinced he didn't exist. I lean probably more to the fact more to the side that there was probably a person. Um, but if you take and you list everything that is claimed about Jesus, and then you cross out all the things that we can't possibly demonstrate, um, you're left with, there's an itinerant Jewish rabbi named Yeshua ben Joseph who taught some people and people yeah. uh, agreed, which is a totally mundane. Um, and it doesn't matter to me whether that person existed or not. However, it does matter immensely to the foundations of Christianity because if it turns out he didn't exist, then there was no sacrifice. Or if it turns out the guy that they've said is Jesus is sort of an amalgamation of the probably hundreds of itinerant rabbis going around practicing some salvation message, then, yeah, then the foundation crumbles. No, I disagree with that because there's, there's only one guy and the evidence is overwhelming. I mean, we have... Well, if it were overwhelming, oh, we, then we would actually believe that this character, Jesus, existed. And when, what do you mean when you say there was only one guy? Well, there's only one guy, and I'm going by what the the universal consensus of scholars... I'm sorry, not... I, I don't give a rat's ass about the... Of scholars. I don't give a rat's ass about the universal consensus of scholars. I'm asking, what do you mean when you say there was only one guy? Well, there's only one guy portrayed in the Gospels, and you also have the evidence uh, from Paul, and you also have the historical evidence that is outside. Yeah, um, you, here's the facts, Joel. And if you go and yes. poll these historians that you want to cite, they will recognize these facts. Paul never met the person Jesus. That's a fact. That's straight out of the okay. Bible. Paul, Paul's never represented that. Secondly, there is no extra-biblical evidence of that is contemporary with the accounts that confirms the existence of Jesus. Zero. None. Not a zilt zero. Not one, okay. one, not one contemporary account confirms anything about his life. This is why the mythicists have a foundation to begin with. Even if they're wrong, even if there was somebody, it's because there's okay, not a then? single, not a single contemporary account outside of the Bible confirms anything at all about Jesus. Okay, then we can then say that uh, Julius Caesar was not assassinated because we have non uh, 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 records uh, uh, of when he was assassinated at the time. Sure. And the four records that we have, Seneca, Diocasius, Plutarch, and Suetonius, they all contradict each other massively. Yeah, so just like the Gospels. Safely conclude. But let's yeah, assume. So, so, so let's then, assume. Then we can. Then, Joel. Then we can safely Joel, conclude. Then we, Joel, we can safely conclude. Okay. Joel. Let's assume you're right. Let's assume that you're right that we can. We, we don't have any reason to believe that Julius Caesar existed. What do we do with that? No, that's irrational. I, I don't. I don't have to. I'm not ever going to say that he didn't exist because he's irrational. Well, you just made an argument that we don't have good foundation to accept that he existed. And I'm saying, if that's the case, what do you do with that? You, you can't just come back and say, oh, I'll no. never accept that. He, that that's no, you. Because, now, because now you're just preaching he, in closed minded. I'm trying to get to the foundation no. of this. Yes. No, 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 no not at all. Because yes, yes, at all. The, the historical methods. That's the reason why we use the historical methods to actually arrive to what yeah. is historically accurate Joel, and what yes. is not accurate. Joel, you're not paying attention. I pointed out 
that I'm not someone who thinks that Jesus didn't exist. Oh, okay, I'm, okay, I'm sorry. I'm fine with the idea that there may have been a person. What do we know about that person reliably? Do we have evidence that they were divine? Do we have evidence that they actually healed the sick? Do we have evidence that they raised somebody from the dead? Do we have anything that would point to their divinity other than, hey, here's a person? We don't even have good evidence that they were actually crucified. Well, I, uh, we, we don't have enough evidence that he was crucified, uh, you said? Right. Y yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, you got Well, you can appeal to your God all you want, but yeah, I'd but actually you'd rather you appeal to some fucking evidence. What yeah. evidence do you have that Jesus was crucified? Is there a record outside of the Bible at all? Appeal to silence. Yes. Not a fallacy. Just really useful. 